Happy Tuesday. How are we doing today? You doing all right? Where's your calendar? Huh? Look at this. Mary and I got check marks the whole month. How many of you out there got check marks for the whole month? If you do, you get the prize. And the prize is the blessing. Amen. That's the prize. How's my hair look? Where are those people? Where is my entourage? Oh, you have oh. A hair out of place there. Oh, thank you. Say this with me. The rest of my life. The rest of my life. Is the best of my life. Is the best of my life. The rest. The rest. Of my life. Of my life. Is the best. Is the best. Of my life. Of my life. Hey, don't forget, when you make offerings or donations uh, today, call me because I want to speak the blessing over you at the same time. Amen? God said to speak the blessing, a certain blessing, word for word, and then He will put His name upon us, and He will bless us. And your offering is blessed, and you are blessed. If you need a prayer answer today, call me. Don't forget to share this video. Amen? Do you have a merry minute for us? I do. Oh, come on in here and say hello. Hello. Step up to the thing so people can see you. See me? I was stepping back. Thank you. <laughs> so they couldn't see me. <clears throat> well, a long time ago when we first came to Florida, I had a job at a, a Dale Bakery. And people would come in there all the time and they would uh, buy bread to feed the birds. So I brought a loaf of bread home. They said, we'll use this dry bread to feed the birds. So I figured birds liked dry bread. Well, I brought it home and I, brought the, I cut up the whole loaf and I dried it out. I cut it in little squares and dried it out because I thought birds liked dry bread. Well, then I, I threw it out in the yard after it was dry and I watched the birds come, and the birds came, and you know what they did? They dunked the water, the, the bread, in a puddle, and then ate it. So I figured, birds don't always like dry bread. So, you know what? It's like dunking our donuts. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, don't assume something before you know all the facts just because somebody says so right <laughs> just because somebody the moral of the story just because somebody says birds like dry bread don't believe everything you hear <laughs> amen i'll tell you what you can believe you can believe the word of god amen amen you can believe the word of god and she does i'm telling you that woman believes god's word she believes this book every word in it and so do I. We believe this book. Amen. Hey, I want to talk to you today. We're talking about prayer blockers. And we've talked about the first two. The first one was how the devil blocks your prayers. The second we talked about was a knowledge of righteousness. A, a failure to understand righteousness can be a huge prayer blocker. Once you understand righteousness, you will understand that you have a blood-bought, God-given right to have your prayers answered. Amen? Now we're on number three. And number three is found coincidentally. That's your word for today. Can you say coincidentally? I don't hear you. Coincidentally. Coincidentally. This is found in Mark chapter 11, right after Jesus teaches us how faith works. Now, I don't think that is too much of a coincidentally. Jesus tells us, have faith in God, Mark eleven twenty-two. 22. For in, the, in, any, in, any, in the next two verses, he tells us how to use our faith, how faith works. Brother Hagen taught on these two verses for 65 years. 
65 years, Brother Hagin would say, he'd read the, people thought he wrote these verses, but he didn't. And uh, it says in verse 23, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he says. That's how faith works. Faith is speaking to mountains, problems, and obstacles. Not praying about them. Speaking to them. Jesus said, when the centurion said, speak the word only over my servant and he shall be healed. Jesus called his faith great. It takes great faith to speak the word. And that's what Jesus is talking about here. Then in the next verse, he tells us how to pray. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire. That means anything you desire. When you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Here's the deal when it comes to prayer. We have to believe we receive it before we get it. The person who says, I'll believe it when I see it, ain't never going to see it. Amen? You've got to believe it's coming to you. You have to believe that you will get it. Once you believe you will get it, I got news for you. You're going to get it. But there's more to this. Those two verses are not the whole passage. The next verse is just as important as those two. And Brother Hagin taught on this one too. This one right here in verse 25. And when you stand praying, forgive. Forgive. If you have aught against anybody, that your Father who is in heaven may forgive your trespasses. I don't think it's a coincidence that that verse is right there. I don't think it's a, it's a coincidence that Jesus, when he taught us how to use our faith. Good morning, Pastor. There's a pastor just hooked in with us. And I say, God bless you for the work you do. I don't think it's any coincidence that Jesus taught us about forgiveness at the same time he taught us how to speak to problems, mountains, and obstacles, and how to pray and receive. Because unforgiveness is the number three prayer blocker. Now, if you haven't watched the first two videos on the prayer blockers, watch these. Watch these. How many of you know that uh, I'm always available to pray with my prayer partners. And when you call, I will answer the phone. I pray with a lot of pastors out there. A lot of pastors call me to agree with them in prayer. Pastors as far away as Australia. And I know you're down there, Pastor Sean, and watching this. We have a great pastor in Australia now. And he is bringing the blessing to Australia. Glory to God. Unforgiveness is a huge prayer blocker. Amen. It's, it's huge. I had a problem with unforgiveness. I don't mind telling you. Everybody knows I'm brutally honest about my past, about the parts of it I want to share, because I don't share it all. My past started the day I got born. Otherwise, I don't go back any further than that. I don't go back any further than that into my life, except sometimes I talk about the good things that happened. But the bad things that happened to me before I got born again, I don't talk about because I don't live there. Amen? And all those people uh, are all, it's all done over with. I have forgiven them. But I had a problem with unforgiveness. A huge problem even after I got saved. Because one day after I got saved, I was, my dad verbally abused our family. I'll tell you that much. Not physically, verbally. Constantly. And I held it against him. I, my brother hated my father. And I didn't like him very well. But I never dishonored him. I always kept my mouth shut. But I never thought he was right in a lot of the things he did. And he wasn't. I look back on it now and I really know he wasn't. And, I, and because of the things and the situation that he put my mother in and everything, I held it against him. 
I had a hard time forgiving anybody. Anybody. So I was telling Mary about this one day after I got saved and about everything that my father did. And Mary says to me, she says, maybe you need to deal with this. She says, you need to forgive him. I went, whoa. I said, you know what? You're right. So I said, I'll go to the Lord. I'll get the Lord to help me do this. So I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, help me forgive my father. I forgive my father. Help me with that. I didn't feel any different. So I went back the next day. I said, Lord, I need to forgive my father and I expect you to help me with that. Nothing happened. So I started saying, I forgive my father. I forgive my father. Day after day, nothing happened. Finally, I'm going back and said, Lord, now help me, please help me forgive my father. Nothing happened. And believe me, people who had done bad things to me, I held it against them. I would scheme against them. I mean, I was awful. Don't look at me like that. Some of the rest of you were the same way. Finally, one day I was in the car. I said, Lord, I forgive my father. Help me forgive my father. And I'm telling you what, it was like the Holy Ghost came in that car and went whoosh. And I was free. It's like, it just drained out of me. All of a sudden, Everybody else who had ever done anything wrong to me, that was gone too. It was all gone. I wasn't holding nothing against anybody. Glory to God. Is this neat or what? I wasn't holding anything against anybody. Hebrews chapter 12. Look at this. 15. Looking diligently, lest any person fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. Unforgiveness can be caused by a root of bitterness. And that was me. I had a root of bitterness in me. And it was awful. But once it was broke. Once it's, you dig up that root. Go back. Sometimes you got to go back to your childhood. And forgive the person you are really holding it against. I taught about this one time in our church uh, about 15 years ago. And this woman came to me at the door crying. And she said, I am 78 years old. I have lived in unforgiveness and carried this all my life. I'm going to go home and deal with it. Well, two weeks later, she came back to church. She stood up and she said to everybody, after Pastor Jim taught about this, I went home and it took me a while, but I got it done and I am free. Two years later, the woman was dying of heart failure. She was on her deathbed and they called me to come. I went over to see her and I said, what do you want? And she said, I want to live. I said, in the name of Jesus I command that spirit of infirmity to come out of your heart. And I tell the, your chest right now, receive a new heart in Jesus' name. That night she went home from the hospital with a new heart. She came back on Sunday morning and told everybody about it. If you're having trouble receiving from the Lord, make sure you're not holding anything against anybody. Call me. I'll pray with you for unforgiveness. Amen? We'll get this handled. You're not gonna, you don't have to live in unforgiveness. Amen? Hey, I'm out of time today. Please share this video with everybody you know. People out there, many people are sick and broke because they can't get past unforgiveness. Have them call me. Have them watch this video. Amen? Don't forget, when you make an offering or a donation or you tithe to this ministry today, call me because I want to speak the blessing over you at the same time. Glory to God. Have a wonderful day. I love you. I care about you. I am determined you're going to live in abundance.